This will be a fast-paced computer repair video, but a full write-up will be available on my website. A guy from work asked me to take a look at his son's PC. It's made by Digital Storm, a Silicon Valley company specializing in performance computers. Looks like a good gaming rig. Has an i7-6850 with 32GB of DDR4 and a GTX 1080. Both the CPU and graphics card are liquid-cooled. Looks like good quality fittings, clean wiring and tubing. The motherboard's an Asus X99A2. I like the clear block on the graphics card so you can see the coolant circulating. Off camera I cleaned up the PC with compressed air. The inside was very dirty. The three radiator intake fans on the bottom of the case probably suck in a lot of floor dust. I'll go ahead and press the power button on the top of the case. The computer lights up, fans spin, and the coolant starts pumping. And then it shuts off. Then wait a few seconds. It comes back on by itself, but not for long. It's stuck in a rebooting loop. The computer's not getting past the post, so I can't even get into the CMOS. I already wasted an hour on the phone with Digital Storm tech support. We disconnected all the peripherals, spent a lot of time moving RAM sticks around and trying different combinations, disconnected the power supply and tested it, disconnected the CPU, removed the graphics card, none of which changed the rebooting loop. Their conclusion was a bad motherboard, which was no longer under warranty, and they wanted around $500 to fix it, assuming that was the actual problem. A little online research indicated that reboot loops were common with the Asus X99 motherboard, and one possible solution is a BIOS upgrade, which is more difficult to accomplish when the computer won't boot. In a previous video, I repaired a Dell with a bricked BIOS using a Raspberry Pi and Flash ROM. You may want to watch that video too, because I go into more detail about the BIOS and show a low-cost programming solution using a Pi. However, that tutorial featured a traditional BIOS. This newer PC has a UEFI BIOS, which complicates things a little bit. The Unified Extensible Firmware Interface is basically a specification for a more robust version of BIOS, which addresses many of its old predecessors' shortcomings. UEFI typically sports a friendly graphical user interface with animation, as opposed to text-based keyboard only. UEFI increases the maximum hard drive size from 2.2 terabytes to 9.4 zettabytes. It implements secure boot, which can help prevent malware from hijacking the boot process. There can be enhanced boot speeds, and some even provide internet access in games. The BIOS firmware is stored on a serial flash chip on the motherboard. Fortunately, the chip is socketed, so no soldering will be required. Before removal, make sure you note pin 1 orientation, which is designated by a little notch on one end of the chip. Also, make sure the computer is unplugged. There isn't much space around the chip, so I'll use a small screwdriver for removal. The blade goes between the chip and the socket. I'll carefully lift up one end of the chip just a little bit by slightly twisting the blade. Then do the same for the other side. I'm going slowly so I don't damage the pins. Now if I'm careful, I should be able to very slowly pull straight up and out. There we go. It's an 8-pin dip package, and all the legs look in good shape. In my previous video, I used a Raspberry Pi as an EEPROM programmer. This time I'll use a TL8662+, which is a very popular, inexpensive USB programmer. Of course, a Raspberry Pi would work too. I'll insert the chip into the ZIF socket and lock it down with the lever. The chip is a WinBond W25Q128FB, which is a 3 volt 128 megabit serial flash memory. I'll run the software that comes with the programmer. Click the Select IC button and type W25Q128FB. The first device looks like a good match, and I'll click to select it. Next, click Device Read ID to test that everything's working. Hex EF. 4018 is returned, so the programmer should be good to go. Click device read, click read. The BIOS firmware on the chip is now being read into the buffer. I'll speed up the video. The read finished, the buffer shows the hex code. Click file save. I'll put the firmware in the downloads folder and call it original BIOS and click save. Okay, it's saved. Make sure you keep a backup copy of the original BIOS just in case anything goes wrong. Next, we need a couple open source tools to work with the UEFI files. Both tools are available on the Longsoft GitHub page. The first one's called UEFI Tool. It's a UEFI firmware image viewer and editor. Click the releases link. I'll skip the pre-release and choose the latest release, which is potentially more stable. We don't need the extract or the find, just the tool, which is available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. I'll choose Windows. After the download completes, go back to the main Longsoft page and then scroll down. Click FD44 Editor. This utility is specifically designed to edit ASUS BIOS files, but there are editors for other brands. Click Release. This one only has Mac and Windows options. I'll get the Windows version. Once complete, go to the Downloads folder. 
I'll use 7-zip to extract the tools. Afterwards, the zip files can be deleted. Now we need the new BIOS firmware. Browse to the manufacturer's motherboard driver page. Scroll down to the latest BIOS, which is version 1902 dated April 2018. Click Download and Save. Go back to the Downloads folder, extract the new ASUS firmware, delete the zip file. I'll rename the BIOS capsule file to New BIOS. Unlike my previous video, the downloaded BIOS file is a capsule and needs some work before it can be programmed to the flash chip. Run UEFI Tool, click File, Open Image File, select the new BIOS capsule, and click Open. Click the arrow to expand the AMI capsule. This shows the Intel image. Right click on the image and select Extract As Is. I'll save it as newbios.bin. This is the actual firmware that will be uploaded to the chip, but not yet. There's one more modification necessary. Run the FD44 editor. Click Open from BIOS image file. Select the original BIOS. This is the original one from the computer. If you get this message, data format can't be detected, then you'll need to confirm the data format. If GBE version is present, then just leave the default data format, which should have MAC address storage set to GBE region and system UUID. Otherwise, if the GBE version is missing, then it's a little more complicated, but I'll post instructions on my website how to handle it. The firmware is from 2017 and is version 1701. Unlike legacy BIOS, UEFI stores the MAC address, the system UUID, and the motherboard serial number. This information needs to be transferred to the new firmware before uploading. Copy the results to the clipboard and paste them into Notepad. If you don't have the original firmware, you could probably use a fake MAC address. You can't just make them up though. They have to be in the correct format. There are free online tools to generate fake MAC addresses. Often the MAC address is on a sticker on your computer. You might be able to retrieve the address from your router logs. If you're using a different editor, the MAC address is usually the first six bytes of the GBE region of the hex file. And I think the other numbers are in the padding region. I don't know much about the system UUID. I assume all computers are supposed to have unique ones. If anyone has any more information, please post it in the comments. The motherboard serial number is usually on a sticker on the motherboard, but I think it does need to be exactly 15 digits, so you may need to pad it. Click open again, but this time select the new BIOS file. Ignore the warning. The MAC file is just a placeholder, and the UUID and serial number are missing. The new BIOS is version 1902 dated 2018. I'll copy the motherboard serial number from Notepad and paste it into the appropriate field. Next, copy the system UUID. Note that in this case, only the first 20 characters are needed. The remainder is just a copy of the MAC address. Finally, copy the MAC address and paste it. Again, if you have a different brand motherboard and are using a different editor, there could be additional required fields such as model number, service tag, product key, etc. If you need help finding an editor or unsure which fields are necessary, I recommend you post a question to the BIOS Mods Forum. In my opinion, it's the best resource on the web for BIOS modifications. Click Save to BIOS Image File, select New BIOS Bin, and click Save. And yes, to overwrite the existing file. Close the editor. Now the bin file is ready to be programmed. Close Notepad and close File Explorer. Run the TL866 programming software again. The correct Winbon chip is still selected. Click Open and select the new BIOS bin file. Leave the default load options and click OK. The new firmware is now in the buffer. Click Device Program and click Program. First the programmer erases the contents of the existing firmware on the chip. It's now programming the chip with the new firmware. Now it's verifying the job. OK, the programming is successful. Using a tweezers, the program chip is carefully placed on the socket. Make sure the notch on the chip is oriented correctly. Confirm all the legs are aligned and press down slowly. Keep a close eye on the pins to make sure they don't bend and make sure the chip is completely seated with a firm press. Here's the moment of truth. I'll switch on the power supply and then press the power button on top of the case. The lights are on, the fans are spinning, the pump's circulating. The coolant level's a little low, I'll need to fill that up later. The PC's staying on. Previously it would have rebooted by now. Looks like the power on self test passed and there's output on the monitor. That's a very good sign. Windows is now loading. It worked. I think the computer's fixed. Just to be sure, I'll open a shell to check the BIOS fields. WMIC NIC get MAC address. The MAC address is returned correctly. WMIC CS product get UUID. The correct system UUID is returned. 
The raw byte order is different because Microsoft uses a format called Pretty Print, but all the hex values are correct. WMIC baseboard gets serial number. The motherboard serial number is correct. Everything looks good. Please leave a comment if you found this video interesting and want me to do more repairs. You can support this channel by leaving a like, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks for watching.